Okay, I think we're ready ready to go then. So I'll be talking about the building resilient and scalable API backends with Apache Pulsar and Spring Reactive. So I'm Lari Hotari. I'm a software engineer at Datastax, working on Luna streaming powered by Apache Pulsar. I'm an open source contributor from heart and recently a Apache Pulsar committer. Today, we will be focusing on three different areas and we'll first go into the section Pulsar and reactive messaging. So the favorite properties of Apache Pulsar for me are that uh, it's a platform where streaming, pub sub and queuing come together. So you kind of like get the, the best parts of uh, Apache Kafka and RabbitMQ in a single platform. And you don't need to have uh, two separate systems for streaming and queuing use cases. And to relate it to that, uh, there's many options for scaling, which come through the properties of queuing. So it can do computing, competing consumers with the with a single partition, for example. And there's also a key shared mode where um, there could be multiple consumers retaining the key order while still using just a single partition. And then the third area is that it's a cloud native architecture. And the support for Kubernetes is first class. And from this, uh, cloud native property the brokers are stateless and that is achieved by a layered storage architecture which is powered by apache bookkeeper and because of this uh, separation the brokers and the storage can be scaled independently so why would you want to do uh, reactive message handling so the the starting point is probably for many that uh, you're looking into a solution where you, you're building your application with the reactive programming model. And, and for this, uh, in uh, reactive, uh, you want to achieve this reactive from end to end and have the compatibility with the reactive streams. And the, the second point could be that uh, with this, you could achieve simplification by this uh, data-oriented functional approach, which is natural for the reactive programming model. And this is very well suited for message handling and messaging use cases. Then from the operational perspective, you want to be prepared for production. And there, these uh, properties like fault tolerance and resilience they they're really important for for achieving a stable operational experience and in the reactive streams it's uh, it's kind of like a good model for for having these fallbacks and retries and timeouts in place and uh, with project reactor you have for example retries and timeouts uh, out of the box with the framework. So you don't need a separate library for doing that. And this uh, resilience, which comes with this uh, flow control is that um, it's a key property of the reactive stream, stream specification. So with this, um, you could achieve a, a asynchronous non-blocking back pressure. So that's uh, special to reactive streams over many other back flow control and back pressure implementations. And that's, that's kind of like also part of this goal of having a reactive end-to-end -end solution. The third area is that uh, performance can be achieved with the parallelism in pipelining and processing at the application level. So here I'm focusing especially to the, your, your application and, and not at the system level. And, and this leads to efficiency by optimal resource usage. And uh, in, in certain uh, 
IO bound workloads, let's say that you'd have a use case where you'd in enrich each message with the API call. And this type of use cases, you could uh, easily handle like 100 times more in a, in a single node than compared to a case where you're handling the messages one by one. So then what, what we have here is a reactive streams adapter library for Apache Pulsar. So I'm, I'm introducing you to that, this library. And this is currently an experimental phase and it's available on GitHub with the ESL 2.0 license. And what this library does is that it wraps the Apache Pulsar Java client asynchronous API with a simple and intuitive reactive API. And this goes beyond a wrapper. So there's uh, this uh, reactive back pressure support for provided interfaces. The, there's Pulsar client resource lifecycle management for the Java clients, let's say producer, reader, and consumer uh, resources. There's uh, message producer caching, which is uh, necessary for efficient and performant uh, sending of uh, messages and API backends. If you didn't have this, it would be very inefficient to create a new producer when, when a new API call is made. So that's, that's part of the resource uh, lifecycle management. So it integrates nicely into the reactive uh, library. For this uh, parallel processing at the application level, there's, uh, there's also support for that. And we'll look into that further in this presentation. And uh, for Spring Boot, there's a starter for auto configuring uh, Pulsar Java client and reactive Pulsar client. So you could get started very quickly. And we'll see that in the live coding demonstration. So the, the building blocks that this uh, library provides to you as application builder and developer is that you have these uh, four types of uh, components here. So there's a message sender for sending messages with a specific configuration to a spe specific destination topic. And this uh, library is a, a adapter for the Pulsar Java client, so it doesn't uh, create separate um, concepts for configuring these uh, these different options. So it's uh, using the Pulsar Java client's uh, concepts and, and objects there. And then there's a reader, which is uh, something that the application can decide the position where to start reading messages. The, the position could be the, the earliest message in the topic, the latest, or it could point to a absolute or a, position or being a time-based position, let's say five minutes ago. And this uh, reader is also suitable for short time message polling. So let's say that there's an API call that comes in, you go in the application to some topic and, and read the last message. And let's say that your state in the application is held in topics, this, this could be one way to um, use this. And then this uh, consumer is uh, for the guaranteed message delivery and handling uh, use cases. And in Pulsar, the broker re-delivers on acknowledged messages on a subscription that is held persistently in the broker. And this uh, consumer is used for these always on use cases and, and also batch processing could be using uh, this uh, consumer and also it's possible to have some short time message consuming or polling use cases. And the last one here is this message listener container that integrates a consumer with the Spring application lifecycle. So that when the application starts, it'll uh, start the consumer and then when the application stops, it'll stop it. And these uh, sender, reader and consumer, they don't match one-to-one -one exactly to uh, um, pulls our Java client resource like producer, reader, and consumer. And the reason for that is that it's uh, we're in this reactive programming model where there is a, a separate assembly time in, in the different run time uh, step. 
so there's kind of like this um, general principle that nothing happens until you subscribe and then reactive apis this is uh, means that when you do the api call you're actually kind of like building this pipeline and that's the assembly time and and for example during that assembly time no no reader or consumer should shouldn't be uh, created at, at the assembly time so for for api design this means that uh, all api calls uh, should return a uh, reactive publisher type and uh, when using project reactor these types are either a flux or a mono and flux is a, a stream of uh, zero or many elements and a mono is uh, zero or one and for calls that don't return data uh, a mono void should be used in those cases so this um, the interfaces that we have here in this uh, library and, and is that uh, this fast aid for this is a uh, reactive pros our client and it contains methods for 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 builders for sender reader and consumer it doesn't directly return a a sender or a reader or a consumer but after completing that builder you you have a uh, have those uh, components to to ready to use and uh, on the sender there's uh, two methods on it send a message and for sending a single one and send messages for sending a stream like a flux and in reader there's similarly there's for reading one or many and then the reactive message consumer has two methods consume message and consume messages and here the method signature is a little bit more complex and we'll get back to that later on in this presentation so then into the second section we'll be looking into a little bit more into this uh, scaling performance of the message processing since performance is an important part of any high scale messaging solution all significant improvements in system scalability come from parallelism and we we all have seen this that in the let's say last 10 years the the speed of a single cpu core hasn't become much faster but we have got a lot more more of those cores and through the cloud, we have access to even even uh, more cores. It's not very uncommon that you you have a system where you have 200 cores available for your application to, to be used. And to take use of this, you have to be able to process things in parallel. And uh, I'll bring up one one concept here: this uh, pipelining, which is um, something that is an extension of parallelism and uh, as an example this uh, from uh, coming from http 1.1 product protocol we could see that uh, when there's no pipelining is is used the the client and the server are mostly idling and in here the pipelining could uh, be used to uh, to reduce to improve the throughput and and reduce the idling so here the the client and, and server are idling much less and this uh, this could be seen as a uh, efficient use of uh, of resources as well uh, also achieving better throughput and performance but also uh, achieving better efficiency so i'll talk a little bit about in order parallel processing strategies because uh, Typically, in many messaging applications, you you have the requirement that you certain messages have to be processed in order. And if there would be a total order o over the messages in a in a certain topic, there would be no way to to in improve the the performance by using parallelism, because you'd you'd have to just process one at one at a time if you have, want to retain a message processing order. And 
one one general solution for at the system level is to use multiple topic partitions where a message is mapped to a specific partition by hashing the key. And one of the possible uh, formulas for calculating a partition is this, that you pick the hash of the message key and then you pick the reminder of the number of partitions. And that's how you choose the partition. And uh, But we're not looking at this right now. We're looking at the application level what are the options to achieve parallelism at the message consumer uh, level in within the application? So th at, at the high level, there's uh, two approaches, uh, micro-batching or then something that is a stream splitting, routing or grouping uh, strategy. So first in, in uh, micro-batching, it's, it's something where um, the consumer is is taking a batch of messages and then sorting and grouping them and then possibly uh, deciding which can be processed in parallel and then at the end waiting for all of them to complete and, and then starting the new new batch and the downside of this is the, that it will add some extra latency to the processing compared to the solution where this would be uh, achieved in in a streaming fashion so one one possibility for this uh, streaming uh, streaming strategy is to use uh, something similar as this uh, calculating this partition, but calculating uh, some processing group number, and using a similar uh, formula for for choosing the processing group. And this is something that uh, Project Reactor has a built-in uh, operator for this. Uh, with, which is called group by and this uh, this library has um, has some utilities over that so that uh, it could be used in applications for for achieving this uh, stream splitting approach and streaming approach to this uh, parallel processing in order by key so if if there would be no requirement of of ordering it would be very simple since uh, you've just processed an order and 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 uh, they would be done in parallel and independently but here the the one of the key requirements typically is this uh, retaining the order this key order so then uh, in in these uh, going into this parallel like how this is achieved in this library and and going back to this reactive message consumer uh, signature here the the way it's achieved is this uh, this consume messages takes a, a function where the input is a, a flux of messages and it produces a, a flux of message results and uh, here the the message result it's um, here's a summary of what it includes so it includes the information of the acknowledgement and uh, the message id and uh, this is used in this uh, framework for uh, acknowledging the messages towards uh, the broker so so instead of modeling this uh, acknowledgement in this streaming solution as a side effect, here it's uh, modeled in a functional way where this uh, is a value. So the result is a value. And this is uh, somewhat similar that in, in functional approaches, there, there aren't typically exceptions, but errors are also values. So that's, uh, that's aligned in that type of uh, thinking, functional thinking. So this um, this approach, uh, the the reason for having this is that there there could be multiple messages in in flight. So if if we would have a, a interface where a message would have to be acknowledged immediately, then there there could be no parallel processing. So this opens up the the possibilities for for uh, parallel processing. So then let's go into the sample use case 
and then after that, some, some of the live coding. So there's a larger sample use case application, which is a simplified IoT backend. And that shows in a, in a context like different uh, ways to use this library for uh, real type of use cases, like this telemetry ingestion from IoT devices and telemetry processing, sending alerts to external applications kind of like a webhook interface and uh, streaming of telemetry values to other applications. And this is uh, over server sent events. And uh, this, this, library, this example is in uh, work in progress and it doesn't have very good do documentation and it's been used for developing this library and, and testing it in a, in a kind of like a real life type of uh, context. This application is no means uh, production code. It's uh, to, to show this library. And if you'd, you're implementing a IoT backend yourself, you should be adding security and, and uh, ways to scale it and so on. So it's not an example about that. So then to our live coding example, this is uh, something that I've prepared beforehand like uh, so that you could take a look at the source code and uh, do this as an exercise at home as well. And, uh, and this is the context that we have for this. So the goal is to build two controllers, uh, ingest controller and then an event firehose controller. And what this ingest controller will do, it'll, uh, it'll take a stream of uh, events coming over HTTP post and, and put them into this uh, uh, telemetry ingest topic. And then this uh, firehose will consume or it'll read from this, uh, this topic and then uh, pass them over as a server sent events to a, a client. So to, to test this, we'll have a shell script and curl command to generate 1 million telemetry events. And here we'll, we'll uh, be consuming them in a, another shell. So to get this uh, started, I'll try to find that. So a typical way to, to start a new, new application is to go to spring, start.spring.io. And here I'll show the, the options that I, I used for this uh, application. So the active IoT backend. And then the, the dependencies, which I chose was Lombok and then Spring Reactive Web, and then I click Generate. And I've already opened this up in IntelliJ to save a little bit of time. And uh, see if I find, find the oh, there it is. So now, now we'll start with by implementing the ingest controller. So that's something that takes the telemetry events as hope HTTP post. So we'll start by creating a, I'll just check the, timing I guess we have about 10 minutes for this so let's let's aim for that we'll ingest controller and we'll mark this as a rest controller so we're using uh, spring web flux for this and and here we'll create a, a method which um, accepts the post but it'll, it won't return any any uh, any result. So for that in this web flux, we'll use monovoid return type. And then we'll call the method ingest telemetry. And here we'll uh, set the request body, which is uh, a flux of telemetry events. And we'll create that class, class soon. It's still missing. And, and just to have something out compilation errors, I'm just adding a placeholder here for now. And then I'll go to create this uh, telemetry event class. This one will use Lombok's data and 
for that and we'll add a few fields here. Oh, is, is there, oh, sorry, sorry, I'll, something, something happened in the, in the screen share then. I'll have to share my screen again. How do I? So now, now I guess we're we're doing better. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Thanks for calling, Enrico. So let's uh, let's continue. Um, so what I've done in the meantime is that I I added this ingest controller. And uh, I'm I'm about to create this telemetry event class. So this has two two fields in it, uh, a string, and we're using short names to just compress the JSON that gets produced. So that's a that's simulating kind of like IoT, like this uh, CentML that is used in IoT. It's not actually implementing that, but just as an example. So now, now we're able to import this. So this was the controller I created when the sharing wasn't uh, working. So then, then we'll con continue to use or uh, use con constructor injection to get the hold of this uh, reactive Pulsar client. So that's uh, that's something that is uh, made available by this uh, Spring. <clears throat> spring starter so the spring starter is added as a <clears throat> as a dependency in in the build doc gradle so that's the only only one that has to be added and and after that it'll it'll uh, auto wire that uh, reactive pools our client and in the in the instructions you'll you'll find that uh, this currently requires that you have uh, pools are running in docker uh, locally I hope we'll we'll have time to complete this since I I did a mistake there on on that sharing, but I to recover. <laughs> so then, uh, well, this is a kind of like a fluent API, and we're we're starting to kind of like build the message sender. And here, we'll this is uh, the Pulsar Java client so schema that has to be passed to it. So that's the, and then we'll choose the topic telemetry just and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use the cache which is required for this uh, like state list this uh, message sender itself so the cache is where it holds the state So now, now I have uh, created this reactive message sender into this field, and, and now I could use this in in this method for uh, sending sending the messages, and I'll map this telemetry flux to a message uh, spec, which is um, a value type, a value class that is used in this uh, this library. So now we have implemented this, and the only part missing is this uh, post mapping, which uh, tells which uh, path this will be available on. So now this is the, the uh, complete code for a very simple ingest controller, in which will accept the stream of events, and we'll we'll soon soon test that. But before going into testing that, we'll implement this uh, this uh, Event fire hose uh, roller, and this is also a, a rest uh, roller, and uh, this will be returning a uh, server sent events, and uh, these are telemetry events, and we'll fix that import, and we'll just simply call it fire hose. 
and then we'll add the uh, get mapping and uh, let's put this uh, fire hose and have a placeholder for now and then we we have to do the constructor wiring again for this uh, reactive uh, Pulsar client. So there, there we have that, and and uh, now we'll be creating a message read message reader. Then we have to pass the the schema to it, and this is the telemetry event class we want the JSON schema for, and the, the topic is uh, telemetry ingest. And for the for the reader, we we have some options to where to start this. And in, in this is not a, a full server sent event controller. So here I'm I'm always starting it from the earliest. Uh, the showcase application contains the one which can continue from the last received event, as as is specified in the server sent event spec. And then besides that, we want to specify this end of stream action that, that it continues, continues polling if, the, if it reaches the end of messages. And the, the, the API call will, will block from the client's perspective until there are messages on the, on the topic. So then we'll then set this into a, into a field and then we'll we'll be ready to use it. So here, uh, read messages, and then we're mapping this message to server sent event builder, and and that's on on the message we we have this in in this value value field. That's that's uh, the telemetry event is in in this value and and then we'll just uh, specify an ID for this and uh, sorry my my dogs are howling in the background <laughs> so I guess they're they're saying that now this code is finished. So we're we're <laughs> I, I guess we're ready to start the the code. Let's uh, let's try to run it. So now we have the application running and um, and let's try to run run. Uh, so first first of all, we'll we'll start the the fire holes. Uh, now it's blocked since there are, there are no messages, so it's it's uh, ready to stream it when when messages arrived. So this one, we have this script for generating one million telemetry uh, events. So let's let's give it a try. So now we see that it's uploading, and here we see the stream flowing. And it's currently the the rate when I was testing it was about twenty k per per second. So it's uh, so it's about fifty seconds to to run this uh, to the end. So here here we see the the data streaming nicely, and uh, the messages are being being received. And we're we're soon reaching one million messages. So there there we are, and this is this is still still continuing to, to listen to new new messages there. So that that was the, the the live coding demo, and then we'll go back to the presentation.
So as a summary, this was the ingest controller. So as you can see, just with a few lines of code, you have a, a streaming uh, solution. So it's taking a line, de line delimited JSON as input. And that is all handled by, by Spring Boot in, in Spring. And uh, with Spring Boot, you could go and add uh, like security to these solutions and make it uh, production ready and also monitoring and things like that. So there's a very good toolbox for, for all this. So this, uh, I'll, I'll paste the link on this, uh, into this uh, chat. So here, there's the, there's the code for this live coding demo, so you can try it at home. And also, this uh, firehose controller—it was uh, it was just a few lines of code to get the server sentiments. And the the showcase application has a more complete example of of implementing uh, server sentiments, since uh, by the spec you should be able to continue from the last received message. And that's also implemented there. So these are all the all the references for for this. So I'll, I'll just paste this uh, so you find it uh, in the in the chat too. And uh, I I think we're we're ready to have uh, questions. Take questions. So so please please go ahead if someone has uh, questions. Yeah, I see some. So it says, what is this reactive IoT backend system built of? Uh, it, so the, the answer to that question is that it's it's using uh, Spring Boot and Spring for that. So it was all using Spring Webflux. So you you could find more more information of the Spring Reactive in at this uh, website. And I didn't have time to cover all the resiliency or these fault tolerance features of a uh, of project reactor but uh, there there should be some examples of how to do retries and things like that so let's see if there's any other questions in the in the chat so if there's no no other questions i i think we're we're ready to, to close this uh, session and uh, I'll, I'll just make a comment about this library so this is uh, the, it's, it's currently being moved under Datastack's uh, GitHub account, so it'll be open for contributions soon. Uh, so it's a, it's already like all Apache Software License 2.0 code. But currently at this location, I won't be accepting pull requests until we have it set up, like all the contributor license agreements and so on. And the reason for doing that is that we would have the possibility to moving moving this over to the Apache Foundation, to the Apache Polar project. So that's that's kind of like the goal I have in mind, and that's the reason for the contribution the license agreements. So it says that, uh, how's the ordering of the messages? Is there any guarantee for it? So so for, for that, um, uh, for that question, the the ordering is uh, by the key ordering, and in, in that that was the the solution that uh, that is in the, in the library. That if you want to do parallelism, you have this possibility to retain key order, and uh, the ordering guarantees are are what uh, Pulsar provides. So whatever, typically when you when you read from a topic, they they come in that order. Obviously, it depends on multiple factors, so I won't have time to cover all those, but uh, you could uh, ask this question also on Stack Overflow, like tagging it, the Apache polls are. So that's one, one way to get answers to, to those questions. So for the, the lag of uh, or monitoring consumption throughput, there's, uh, there's different means and for monitoring in uh, Project Reactor. So I, I haven't tried that out yet to to hook it into this uh, this library, but uh, it's uh, using micrometer under the covers, so that could be uh, that could produce into Prometheus and so on. So there there's all the, all what what is available in Spring in Spring Boot that could be used for for setting up uh, monitoring and so on. 
and this is uh, not yet fully like production quality code and uh, i can like invite you to to contribute and and improve it so this is the main focus has been on on uh, on the api design by now and in the test coverage for the library itself is not very good yet but on the, on the way to 1.0 1.0 will be production quality so hopefully we'll achieve that in a couple of months. But uh, it doesn't, usually it takes uh, may, pretty long to get into production yourself. So you could, you could start providing feedback from immediately and trying it out and so on. And we'll definitely reach uh, production quality in, in uh, sooner or later. So I, I hope I covered all the, the questions uh, in, uh, Thanks for for attending. Okay, bye.